Hello grade 12 students in this video we're going to talk about our new lesson about fertilization fertilization belongs to chapter 1 about the basic mechanism of uh, sexual reproduction document 6 fertilization what is fertilization let's start as a definition definition of fertilization it's the union of the two haploid gametes the sperm cell from the male and oocyte 2 from the female giving rise to the diploid cell which is decided so these two haploid they unite with each other to give the diploid cell this process takes place in the upper third part of the oviduct or the fallopian tube so this process takes place in the upper third part of the oviduct so as a definition fertilization is when the sperm meets with the ovium with the egg cell which is now called oocyte 2 so you have to use this oocyte 2 so it's the unit of the sperm cell from the male with the oocyte 2 from the female these two they are haploid giving rise to diploid cell which is the zygote this process takes place in the upper third part of the oviduct meaning that it takes place in the female's body where the sperm cell will travel toward the oocyte to to fertilize it and here we can watch a video talking about fertilization Fertilization is the epic story of a single sperm facing incredible odds to unite with an egg and form a new human life. It is the story of all of us. During sexual intercourse, about 300 million sperm enter the vagina. Soon afterward, millions of them will either flow out of the vagina or die in its acidic environment. However, many survive because of the protective elements provided in the fluid surrounding them. Next, the sperm must pass through the cervix, an opening into the uterus. Usually, it remains tightly closed, but here the cervix is open for a few days while the woman ovulates. The sperm swim through the cervical mucus, which is thinned to a more watery consistency for easier passage. Once inside the cervix, the sperm continues swimming toward the uterus, though millions will die trying to make it through the mucus. Some sperm remain behind, caught in the folds of the cervix, but they may later continue the journey as a backup to the first group. Inside the uterus, muscular uterine contractions assist the sperm on their journey toward the egg. However, resident cells from the woman's immune system, mistaking the sperm for foreign invaders, destroy thousands more. Next, half the sperm head for the empty fallopian tube, while the other half swim toward the tube containing the unfertilized egg. Now, only a few thousand remain. Inside the fallopian tube, tiny cilia push the egg toward the uterus. To continue, the sperm must surge against this motion to reach the egg. Some sperm get trapped in the cilia and die. During this part of the journey, chemicals in the reproductive tract cause the membranes covering the heads of the sperm to change. As a result, the sperm become hyperactive, swimming harder and faster toward their destination. At long last, the sperm reach the egg. At long last, the sperm reach the egg. Only a few dozen of the original 300 million sperm remain. The egg is covered with a layer of cells called the corona radiata. The sperm must push through this layer to reach the outer layer of the egg, the zona pellucida. When sperm reach the zona pellucida, 
They attach to specialized sperm receptors on the surface, which triggers their acrosomes to release digestive enzymes, enabling the sperm to burrow into the layer. Inside the zona pellucida is a narrow, fluid-filled space just outside the egg cell membrane. The first sperm to make contact will fertilize the egg. After a perilous journey and against incredible odds, a single sperm attaches to the egg cell membrane. Within a few minutes, their outer membranes fuse and the egg pulls the sperm inside. This event causes changes in the egg membrane that prevent other sperm from attaching to it. Next, the egg releases chemicals that push other sperm away from the egg and create an impenetrable fertilization membrane. As the reaction spreads outward, the zona pellucida hardens, trapping any sperm unlucky enough to be caught inside. Outside the egg, sperm are no longer able to attach to the zona pellucida. Meanwhile, inside the egg, the tightly packed male genetic material spreads out. A new membrane forms around the genetic material, creating the male pronucleus. Inside, the genetic material reforms into 23 chromosomes. The female genetic material, awakened by the fusion of the sperm with the egg, finishes dividing, resulting in the female pronucleus, which also contains 23 chromosomes. As the male and female pronuclei form, spiderweb-like threads, called microtubules, pull them toward each other. The two sets of chromosomes join together, completing the process of fertilization. At this moment, a unique genetic code arises, instantly determining gender, hair color, eye color, and hundreds of other characteristics. This new single cell, the zygote, is the beginning of a new human being. And now the cilia in the fallopian tube gently sweep the zygote toward the uterus, where he or she will implant in the rich uterine lining, growing and maturing for the next nine months until ready for birth. So here we start for successful fertilization. What do we need? For successful fertilization, what does the woman should have for? What are the characteristics for the woman? For the woman, for successful fertilization, a woman must be in her ovulation day meaning at day 14 of the menstrual cycle or a day after that. She should have healthy oviducts and healthy uterus. Since if they are healthy, so fertilization can occur easily. The female also should have abundant thin cervical mucus fluid. That will decrease the acidity of the vagina, protecting the sperm cells and paving their way toward the oocyte to, to fertilize it at the upper third part of the oviduct. So the woman must be in her ovulation day, have healthy oviduct and healthy uterus, should have abundant thin cervical mucus, the mucus that's found at the cervix level that has important function by decreasing the acidity of the vagina this acidity will kill the sperms so this thin cervical mucus will help in decreasing the acidity and thus protecting the sperm cells for the what are the characteristics that should be found in a man normal quality 
and the quantity of the sperm cells. So the quality of the sperm cells should be at its top, it should be normal with no abnormalities, and the quantity of the sperm cells should be a high quantity so that one and only one of these sperm cells would enter. Also, also the man should possess healthy vas deferens or vas differentia. So normal quality, quality and the quantity of the sperm cells are needed and also the healthy vas deferens whereas for the female it should be in her ovulation day or a day after that it should be in uh, sorry it should have healthy oviducts and healthy uterus it should have abundant thin cervical mucus that help in decreasing the acidity of the vagina thus protecting the sperm cell and paving their ways for the process of fertilization so let's now move to the steps of fertilization steps of fertilization you have the sperm cell will approach toward the egg the sperm cell acrosomal enzyme that are formed at the acrosome this is the acrosome the structure of a, a sperm cell the proteins on the sperm head bind to the receptors the plasma membrane of the sperm and the egg they fuse together the sperm nucleus enters the egg cytoplasm and the fertilization membrane will form at the end the egg the nuclei of the eggs and the sperm will fuse together and then we have the zygote nucleus so the first step sperm cell adherence recognition and retraction so the motility of the sperm cell is activated once they approach toward the oocyte 2 they force their way to the areas of the follicular cells follicles assisted by enzyme that is probably diffused due to the acrosomal reaction it's called acrosomal reaction the acrosome contains enzyme they adhere to the zona pellucida and the zona pellucida is found at the egg cell or side 2 this is the zona pellucida first of all we have the corona radiata this one the corona radiata is the outermost one and these we have follicular cells also this is the cytoplasm so it's between the coronary follicular cells and the cytoplasm and here we have the membrane so whenever they fuse or they adhere toward the zona pellucida and then what will happen whenever they fuse the sperm cells will fuse and we have the acrosome reaction and sperm head in the acrosome it contains enzyme so they can bind to the membrane they can penetrate we have membrane adherence and we have blocking of what is known by polysperm second step is the entry of sperm cell acrosome reaction penetration and absorption so this is the second step of the fertilization process where the sperm cell will entry through the acrosome reaction they penetrate and the absorption of the sperm so the adherence to the zona pellucida releases the acrosomal enzyme this process is called the acrosomal reaction so the release of the acrosomal enzyme is called the acrosomal reaction the action of the enzymes and the propulsion of the flagellum the tail enables the sperm to pass through the zona pellucida and then penetrate to the pericytal then it will unite, unite tangentially this is the acrosome as i said where it contains enzymes and this is called acrosomal reaction this is the flagellum this is the tail of the sperm cell so the plasma membrane of the oocyte will absorb the head and the whole male gamete as soon as the sperm enters oocyte 2 will be activated to undergo cellular cellular changes they occur a level at the level of the cell what are these changes cortical reaction cytoplasmic changes the oocyte 2 released by exocytosis the cortical granules content this will lead to the formation of what's known by fertilization membrane so oocyte 2 released by exocytosis of the cortical granules the vesicles these vesicles these sacs 
contains substances that will lead to the formation of the fertilization membrane. But what is the role of the fertilization membrane? This leads to the modification of the zona pellucida and makes it impermeable to other sperm cells. So the zona pellucida will be impermeable to other sperm cells. So this will block what's something known by polyspermy, the entrance of more than one sperm to the to the egg cell. On the other hand, pericytic space will enlarge, will be larger in size, yet oocyte diminishes in size. So what polyspermy? It's a lethal condition where more than one sperm nucleus will react with the female nucleus. And this is the fertilization membrane and also the modifications allow the zona pellucida to be impermeable for other sperm cell, thus preventing polyspermy. The second changes, they are a resumption of meiosis. The second meiotic division since blocked since ovulation resume and ends after an hour by the release of the second polar body as we studied before and the formation of the oocyte, which finally become an ovium. Third step or third stage of the spermatogenesis is the formation and the fusion of the pronuclei. The nucleus of the ovium will swell and it becomes the female pronucleus. Also, the sperm undergo modification. It will lose its tail and the midpiece, so it will lose the mitochondria, and its nucleus will swell and will form the male pronucleus. Where we have the male pronucleus, female pronucleus. These two, the male and the female pronucleus, they fuse in the center of the ovium after duplicating their chromosomal content. Here are the chromosomes, as you note here, they are made up of two chromatids each. So here, the pronuclei envelope break down and the maternal, also the paternal chromosomes, they mix together. This is what we call by Chirogamy. Okay? As such, the fertilized egg, which is called the zygote, being the first cell of the embryo. This is the chirogamy, the fusing of the male and the female uh, maternal and paternal gametes to give the zygote. And this is the figure showing the chirogamy. So, pronuclei, female and male pronuclei, they and the envelope break down. Maternal and paternal chromosomes, they mix together. And this is called Karyogamy, as such, fertilized egg, which is the zygote, this first cell of the embryo is now born. This is the process of fertilization.